My dear Sheikh Yasser Birjas and uh, Sheikh Abdul Nasir, if you can hear me, come to the stage. And guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This is like a pre lunch salam. Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah, because my, the title of my talk is The Mighty Test. And the mighty test for every speaker is to just get a basic salam out of the crowd. It's like every time it's the same thing, go through the same thing. And the second part of it is effects of loving the life of this world. I want to begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the organizers of the Islamic Circle of North America, particularly the convention organizers, it takes a lot to put a, a, a program of this, an activity of this caliber, and then also the program committee for a lot of the thought that goes into developing these kinds of sessions. You should know that for the 38th convention, so if you haven't been coming for the last however many, the organization, mashallah, has done tremendous effort to uplift the collective well-being of the Muslim community, not only in America, but around the world through its various projects and through its various divisions and departments. The love of this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, that He is the one who gave us the faculty of reason and intellect and the sight and the seeing, the, the hearing and the senses, to be able to live in this life. The challenge is that when we are touched by an event or an incident or a calamity, ibtila, a test, a trial of some sort, our sense of security, sense of stability is shaken. It's often shaken to the extent that we start to experience anxiety, experience fear, experience a sense, if you will, of disillusionment would a merciful God have done what just transpired the focus that I have is to talk about the idea that in living in this life in using all of those senses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us we may have a human tendency to accrue, accrue to accumulate to gather the extreme of which is to hoard the signs of shamelessness or haya in this world is that somebody who may have been hoarding, gathering a lot of things, may have done so in a quiet, shameful way, saying, you know, I don't want anyone to see what I have. But the sign of the times that we're living in is that there's actually a show on TV. I don't watch it, but I've read about it. What is it called? The Hoarders. It's actually a show where the person says, not only do you get to know what I'm doing, just put it on, the cam on TV and just let everybody else know how I'm hoarding things, how I'm addicted to gathering, accumulating, and subhanAllah, developing, if you will, a love of this world. What does it do? What is the impact of the love of this world? What is it that we should be looking out for? And indeed, what happens when we love this world and in the blink of an eye, literally in the blink of an eye, if you've watched the reports of what occurred in Oklahoma and Kansas and many of the Midwest and Southern states where the tornadoes hit, they have it down to minutes, minutes. A family goes back and finds out that a clock, a clock in the family home that was destroyed, a clock had stopped working at three, 24 or 325, I'm not sure the exact, but 320 something. That's the exact time approximately when the tornado struck. So in the blink of an eye, all of that which we've been gathering, all of the effort to accrue, to accumulate, to really have and to hold in this life can vanish, literally vanish in a matter of seconds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us these signs has sent us these signs. And what's amazing about the time that we live in is that all of what occurred in the natural disaster domain, 
all of what occurred in the natural disaster domain, ultimately, except for earthquakes, and even they can be predicted to some degree without perfection, but to some degree. But for sure, people knew the tornadoes were coming. For sure, people knew, know when hurricanes are coming. And yet, all of the preparation, all of the attempted mental preparation, the physical preparation, sometimes cannot prevent from the loss of that which we accrued, accrued in this world. And this was the amazing thing, that the programmers of this convention, when I talk to them, sometimes they contact us a year in advance. This weekend, they say, reserve the next weekend. And then they start working on the program six to eight months in advance. And then they come up with session titles and descriptions, and they engage the speakers. And then we talk about it. Who would have known? Who would have known that within two weeks, three weeks of this conference, that the topic that I was given, the mighty test, the effects of the love of this life, that that would have come to be a most significant session in the context of what happened in the world. The tornadoes strike a school, strike a school, and seven to nine lives of children are lost in the blink of an eye. That in Bangladesh, a clothing factory collapses, killing hundreds of breadwinners, moms and dads who might have gone home, elder brothers and sisters who went home to work, sorry, and who didn't return home. And yet, those signs, those predictions of collapse and calamity, we have them. And yet, even then, we are not prepared enough. But what about the signs when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, specifically in Surah Al-Baqarah, is telling us, that we will test you with something of fear. That hunger, these are human, human conditions, human emotions, human you know, experiences. We talk about loss. We talk about fear, khawf. We talk about hunger. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, as if to enumerate, if that didn't get you, if it, if it didn't strike you that you might be afraid, we may test you with fear or with hunger or with the loss of life. Well, anfusi was samarat, and even the fruits. So for some, it may be crops, but crops can be translated into anything, something that you were building, something that you were building. The farmers spend months, months preparing a, a tree that will ultimately bear fruit. So that may be uh, you know, relevant for them. But for you and I, whatever we're building, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we will test you with that, with fear and with hunger and with the loss of life and, and, and fruits. But in that, the love of this world doesn't distract us from the ultimate purpose of this world life. And that is, that is, that when musibah, when a trial, a calamity tests us, musibah, what do those believers do? That indeed to Allah we belong and to Allah is our return. So this state of mind, the state of mind elevates the average human being to realize that there is so much that I can do by living in this world and becoming of this world. But there's so much more that I can do when I can be uh, living in this world, but trying to be of the akhirah, of the akhirah. And that, subhanAllah, is just a, 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 an introduction, if you will, to what so much could be said on this topic. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, and know, subhanAllah, in Surah Al-Hadid, A'lamu, and know that this life, that this life, this hayatul dunya that we always talk about, this life is amusement, distraction, diversion, the adornment, the zina, the adornment of this life. All of these things, and the, and the, and the, and the verse goes on to say that these things end up doing what for us? That subhanAllah, they cause us to boast to one another. They increase us in sort of a competition, an increase of, of wealth and of children, statuses that are human in nature. Societies measure their advances sometimes by the gross domestic product. What are you producing? What is the entire value of that nation? Or on the human side, what is the population like? Is it declining? Is the mortality rate high? 
what are the issues causing that destruction of, of, of life, if you will. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends that verse in Surah Al-Hadid by saying, وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءُ الْغُرُورِ And what is, what is this life? What is this life that we all talk about except, subhanAllah, a enjoyment, if you will, of delusion, an enjoyment of delusion. Others look at this accruing of wealth and accumulation of wealth, and then sometimes they forget that the sustenance that we have is not my effort, it is the culmination of my effort. But the provider, the sustainer, a razik is always Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That it is my effort, which is, a, which is a part of that equation, that divine equation that begins. That begins, as the Prophet sallallahu said, that even our rizq is written in, while we are still in the wombs of our mother. While we are still in the wombs of our mothers. So some look at this mighty test and they may contract in terms of their interaction with society. They may step back from society. But then Allah SWT says to Muhammad وسلم, in the Quran, قُلْ إِنَّ رَبِّي يَبْسُطُ رِزْقًا لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَقْدِرُ لَهُ That say, O Muhammad, say to them that I am aware, I am confident, I am, I am cognizant of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expands the sustenance of whomever He wills and in the same verse constricts the sustenance of whomever He wills. But in the verse that is talking about the expansion of sustenance, the constriction of sustenance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the middle of all that, that whatever in the middle of all of that discussion of sustenance, when you talk about spending, Whatever it is that you spend, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He will replace it. He will replace it. So one of the effects of the, the, the accumulation and this mighty test for all of us is truly that we may end up in a state of ghafla, complete outright neglect, abandonment if you will, of the duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the Qur'an itself, to the Qur'an itself. And indeed to the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whose entire life, in whose entire life there was no sign of accumulation of wealth, no sign of attachment to this dunya and neither in the lives of his companions. Among the effects of their living in this life but wanting to be of the akhirah was that their hearts were always attached to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, to the Book of Allah, and to the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so we have to look and say, how attached are we? Are we failing the test? Are we failing the test as human beings in America? Are we failing the test truly? Yes, we are living at a time when the acquisition of wealth, when the acquisition of wealth, when the acquisition of even useless things is literally as close to, if not faster than, a click of a mouse, a tap on an iPad or your mobile device and you can order from Amazon.com or eBay or wherever and it will be delivered to your household while you sit having exerted no more effort than to click or to tap. Now think about that. Think about that in, the con in contrast of Zuhud and Ibn al-Mubarak in, uh, uh, in his work entitled Zuhud, Hafidhullah says this, citing the life of one of the companions who grew up in the shadow of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a young person, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who when he became Khalifa, when he rose to the level of leadership, not, not that he desired it, but that it was uh, asked of him. And they asked him, you are now Khalifa. Aren't you worthy of a more dignified outfit? Shouldn't you be more like royalty? Shouldn't you live and, and, and dress like them? And do you know what he said? This is how you can close this topic. This is how you can put your arms around it. His response to them wasn't, what were you waiting for, man? I've been Khalifa for 10 days and nobody asked me about my clothes. He didn't say, who is going to go to the far ends of the earth and bring me the best clothes? No, he looked within. He looked at what he had. Things, clothes that were made of rough fabric, 
rough fabric when in the, in the love of this life we equate the smoothness of something with enjoyment and contentment and the roughness of it with something that is of zuhud. And his fabric was rough. Patches on his clothes. And yet this was his response as the Khalifa. Khalifa, access to all wealth if wanted. And he said, these clothes protect me from arrogance and haughtiness. These clothes that you see me in, that you want to change, that you want me to wear something different. Let me tell you the function of these clothes. The function of the wealth that I have or the acquisition. He says, these clothes keep me from arrogance and haughtiness. At the same time, they enhance the sense of tranquility. The sense of tranquility, sakina, during the daily prayers. Where is your outfit that you feel most comfortable in when you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is that room that you say, when I'm in that room, nothing of this dunya bothers me? Or is it that everything in our house is full of distraction, delusion, adornment, and potentially keeping us from the adhkar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa as narrated in Sahih Muslim, reminded us, in Allah la yanzuru, that indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your shapes and forms or at your wealth. Walakin, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your hearts and your deeds. At your hearts and your deeds. The amount of energy spent on the acquisition of a body image that is set up as a standard that is not, with this, not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in terms of the sisters of the ummah. We're not saying don't be healthy, be healthy. But when all of the attention is spent on that, and then yet life can be taken like this, of what value will it be to us? In closing, Imam al-Bayhaqi, Hafidhullah said in his uh, Sunan al-Kubra, also about the life of uh, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said this about wealth. And subhanAllah, if we had to do fundraising, I would just, just say this saying. Of course, do the verses of the Quran and then sit down. But this saying does it all for us. He says, Allah has granted wealth to the rich so that the poor could benefit. Allah has granted wealth to the rich so that the poor could benefit. If the wealthy, because that's the test, the acquisition of wealth. If the wealthy had performed their duty in a righteous manner, poverty and famine would diminish. Poverty and famine would diminish. And what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in that verse in Surah Al-Baqarah with which I began? That we will test you with something not only of fear but of hunger. It is at the core of human existence to have something in my stomach. But the amazing thing about how to respond to all of this is that we are not doing enough with all of what we have. And yet we want more. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? That if you want to talk about this life, this world, if you don't want fear, if you don't want anxiety, if you don't want grief, rid ourselves of the attachment to this dunya. Return to the istiqamah of the deen, of the establishment instead of the religion in our daily lives. Inna ladhina qalu rabbuna allaha thumma istiqamu tatanazzalu alayhimu al-malaikatu alla takhafu wa la tahzanu those who say Allah is our Lord in Surah Al-Fusilat and establish the religion in their lives, upon them angels descend and neither shall they experience fear nor shall they experience anxiety or grief. In another verse, if you're talking about those who are believing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, among those who don't want fear and anxiety and grief, then the exhortation is, spend of what you have. الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ إِنَّ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Those who have the wealth and who spend of night and by day, 
in secret and in public, there's a reward for them from their Lord, and they shall experience neither fear nor shall they grieve. Brothers and sisters, think about all of what we have in life. Think about all of what we have in life. Isn't it time that we engaged in spring cleaning? This is spring. Until June 21st, it'll be spring. Isn't it time we go home and we look and do an inventory of what we have? And then we ask, does what we have please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not only in its quantity, but in also in what it does for the family. This includes the violent video games that should never enter a Muslim household. The horror movies should never enter a Muslim household. The kinds of entertainment that are brought in through inter the internet and television that should not enter a Muslim household, let alone enter the minds and hearts of our young children. Spring cleaning will mean that we will have to look at what we have, ask if we really need it. The harder question, especially those of you who have moved recently, when was the last time we used it? <laughs> I mean, we moved like three years ago, and there are still boxes in the basement and garage that we haven't even unpacked. Some of them, I'm sure, are things that probably others could benefit from. So this is not something just I'm telling you, but myself. And that notion, why is that critical? Because when you start to do an inventory, an audit of what we own, what we have, how did it come into our home, were the sources of income permissible? or impermissible, was there ever a phase in our life when somehow some wealth entered our home that was impermissible, some source of income that still today, it, 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 it pinches our heart to say, ah, oh my God, how could I have done that? I paid with that wealth for the marriage of my child. I paid with that wealth for the aqiqah of my newborn. I paid with that wealth for the burial of my mother and father. But I had questions about that wealth. So the mighty test is to look, has it all of the wealth that we accrued caused ghafla, neglect, the abandonment of the message of, of the Quran and the, the, the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi Has it truly become to a point where we have no clue that we are in a state of ghafla, that we are actually in a state of delusion, that we're actually adorning our homes and our families and our, and our, and our, you know, our, our communities with so much and then the second part is the new acquisition, even the bazaar. And I want you to frequent the bazaar and support the vendors. But if you already have something, think rather, as the Prophet ﷺ said, give gifts. It increases the love. Buy something perhaps to give to someone rather than take it again home. Books that are never read, sajadas that are never opened for prayer, paintings that are lost in you know, some cracks of the home and never hung up. Maybe glorifying Allah, but never hung up. New acquisition for three uh, quotes that I can end with about the summary of what acquisitions mean to the lives of those who were tested with the hurricane. One of them said, as he went back to look at the home and to clean out all of, they have three piles. The pile of things that they really desperately want to save or somehow restore. Old family photographs, perhaps some important papers a little bit larger pile of things that may be functional, that they may not want, but others can take, in a larger pile of things that have been destroyed. And this man said, I have been meaning to clean out my attic. I have been meaning to clean out the attic. But the hurricane came, a tornado came, that was taken care of. Another one said, I'm going to quit being a hoarder. Because once everything's been taken away, you're like, this is a good time to start all over again. <laughs> Literally. I had a brother who put stuff in storage, and subhanAllah, he didn't pay it in time, the bill of the storage. And before his wife and kids came back from overseas, he lost everything in storage. <laughs> they just took it away and they auctioned it. And then suddenly he was like, subhanAllah, what a beautiful state of life to be in. To start off with nothing. And then get as you need. And the last one said, we don't, as they went back to the home, we don't really know what we're even looking for. Can you imagine how much care we take and even sometimes carelessness in gathering things? And this person after the tornado is saying, we are here. Some of, uh, one of the couple was on vacation. 
on vacation when the tornado destroyed their home. So when they came back, they're here, we're here. We don't know what we're even looking for. Ask, your question, ask yourself that question the next time you're in the mall or in the bazaar. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.